how is it looking in practice with all three of them? What are you seeing from these guys? Well, ups and downs. I, I think with Purdy, you know, he didn't play at all in the offseason. In fact, I mean, it was a surprise to some people that he was as far along when training camp started. So, you know, the, the last practice against the Raiders, he, the Raiders got their hands on a lot of footballs. Uh, but the encouraging thing for him is that uh, he did make some throws down the field, 20, 25 yards outside the numbers. So th- there just doesn't seem to be any wavering about where he is mm-hmm. and just kind of going through the process and, and knocking the rust off and getting the timing back with his receivers. Uh, it just doesn't seem like there's much concern at all about where he is. Uh, it, it, you know, For all three guys, it hasn't always been pretty on the practice field. It, it rarely is during training camp. Um, but I would say that, you know, if you're, if you're just doing the eyeball test and you're out there just watching each of these guys throw the football around, I mean, Sam Darnold is a guy that, that looks, you know, he looks physically uh, like an NFL quarterback should. But what Brock Purdy has is, A, the success in the system, uh, the confidence of the coaching staff and the players around him, and then these just kind of unique skills that you can't measure. I mean, it's the reason he – he was the final pick in the, the 2022 draft because you watch him throw at the combine, you watch him do all these other things, and it's not exactly eye-popping. But then when you just see him under pressure, the poise, uh, the decision-making, uh, the accuracy. So he, he brings just so many variables to the equation. And, you know, the, the A number one thing, the one thing you can measure if you're the 49ers is the number of victories when he was out there on the field. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's his job. And then I would say, you know, for most of training camp, it's been three weeks now, uh, Darnold and, and Trey Lance have had their days when uh, they look good, they look not so good. Um, but I'd say by and large, the Fortiners have to be very happy with their, their quarterback situation. They were, they were burned last year. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, they had three quarterbacks that they really liked to go into the season. With Trey Lance as a starter, they knew there would be some rough patches, so they thought that he would emerge at the end of the season a much better player than at the beginning of the season. Well, he never got that opportunity because of the injury. And then, of course, Jimmy Garoppolo comes in. He kind of steadies the ship a little bit, and they start winning some football games. And then Brock Purdy, when he stepped in there, of course, Christian McCaffrey was also with the team at that time, but that offense really took off. So, so they feel good about their quarterback situation and yeah. the competition for the number two. So the question I have then is, is Lance going to get some time with the ones in a game in the preseason? I mean, Denver's coming in, and uh, this is the final rubber meets the road preseason game. Um, do we see Purdy at all? Um, I know I'm asking multiple questions here, but it is, yeah. how, how is this all going to work in a second preseason game? Because if Lance needs time and he needs reps and the ones might need some time, do you give it, do you give it to Lance in a preseason game? Does Purdy go a little bit? Because you, you don't really want to throw him against Mike Tomlin and the Steelers, right? In week one, having not played since the NFC championship game, right? Uh, so I, I'll just know, throw that I, out to you here. What do you think? I, yeah, I think that, you know, the bigger priority is just make sure everybody reaches the starting line healthy. And I, I don't know that they believe that Brock Purdy needs that playing time. I mean, look at it this way. I mean, he, he's been practicing two days on one day off. And I think he, he might go start going every day now, maybe this week. Uh, but he already has probably twice the number of practice snaps in this training camp than he did all of last year when he was the number three behind uh, Trey Lance and Nate Sudfeld. I mean, mm-hmm. he just got scraps on the practice field. And then later, of course, Jimmy Garoppolo uh, took the pay cut and remained with the team. But every time that Brock Purdy has been on the field in training camp, it's been with the number ones. And on those practices where he's not out there practicing, then it's been Sam Darnold and Trey Lance splitting splitting reps with those number one offensive line and receivers. So I don't know exactly what how they plan to, to work this. Uh, I don't know if they want uh, Brock Purdy to, to be subjected to any unfriendly defensive linemen here before the start of the regular season. What is today? Today is August 14th. Yes, sir. The season starts September 10th. 
So they very well might just say, hey, let's give this guy one more month of of work or three weeks, whatever it is, to, to work and, and get the arm strength up and get his velocity uh, up to where it was. Uh, and then, you know, turn him loose for the first week of the regular season. So I, I really don't know um, what they plan to do, but Richie, it wouldn't surprise me at all if the next time you see him, Brock Purdy, that is, lined up against team in a different color uniform, it is that week one game at Pittsburgh. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 